Bill got us a great equine question. He was asking, what annual shots and dewormer should he be giving his horses? That's actually a topic we've been addressing throughout the year. Uh, we're gonna head over to the store and talk to Echo and I believe Annalise as well um, to see if they can help us answer Bill's question. Bill asked, what annual shots or dewormer should I give my horses? I've always done just a five way. Okay. So it hits pretty much everything. Our five way usually covers the sleeping sickness and encephalomitis. Those are just infections that can go rampant in your horses and that helps protect them from other horses that may be contaminated. Uh, tetanus is one that you want to do every year. Um, it's your veterinarian recommended vaccination that should be done every year. If gotcha. your horse is up to date on shots, you can just give them their five way and they're good for the year. Five way includes tetanus? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, West sense. Nile is separate. We sell it separately only because when you have it at a combination shot, um, unfortunately you will have to do a booster shot of the West Nile later just because of how that vaccine counteracts the other ones. But if you do the West Nile separately and you keep up to date on it, you can just give that West Nile single shot once a year. So when it comes to matters of vaccinations and deworming, uh, these are just general guidelines. So if you have any specific questions or concerns regarding your horse, uh, consult your veterinarian. Back to Echo. Hmm, that's good to know. Okay, so is the West Nile typically in the five way as well? It can be, we don't offer it, but there are a lot of other stores who do. Okay, so what does our five way do? Our five way takes care of the encephalomitis, the um, tetanus, the, and then the two types of sleeping sickness, and then rhinomitis and paralytic. Nice. And then we offer the West Nile separately. Correct. Benefit being? That you, as long as you're up to date on it, you can give it one shot once a year. Nice. That makes sense. And then you're doing a separate dewormer program from that? Yep, and most people will do a broad spectrum in the fall but the best way to know what you need is to do a fecal count like with your veterinarian so then you know what kind of parasites you're up against. But really, um, you can do uh, an ivermectin paste or a basic strongit or botticide in the spring. Mm -hmm. Yep, just like that. All right. So if you're looking for more information, we've definitely been doing a lot on equine care. Uh, we have an equine edition emag that you can check out. Check that out here. Uh, we also got our blog, North 40 Life, where we're always putting up new content. Um, and you can check out everything equine there as well. Check that out here. Hey guys, so we got a question in from Becca about area boots. Turns out our area boot rep, Alvin, is in the building, so we're gonna go talk to him and get the answer. Becca asked, are area lady fat baby boots appropriate for horseback riding? Pretty much the same. Gotcha. See how clunky this is. Gotcha. It's there's a lot of there's a lot of, of, of uh, drag and your circumference is is less there. If you feel mm -hmm. that and then feel this, it's huge. Gotcha. And, and our actually our our, our Boots are designed to, to have a 70% drag in, 30% drag out. In other words, the, the resistance comes when you when you insert your foot in the stirrup, and then it takes it out when you when you uh, uh, go to take it out. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. So it has really nothing to do with square toe versus round toe. No. Really, what's going to be differentiating your riding boot from a non-riding boot is thickness of your sole. Pretty much the, the clunkiness and then, the, and then the, the depth of it here. The only thing you want to be careful of is, is width, width in here. There's some of these uh, these vendors that have uh, like a four stitch welt that are that are wide and, and gotcha. you just got to have enough room to make make sure you're. That in makes that. sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, to answer that young lady's yeah. question, there's a no and a yes. The no, first of all, I'm going to sound like a politician here, but the no is is this one that was the original fat baby with the blown sole with a lot of aggression. It, it's not going to it's not going to fit in the stirrup and do it correctly. You know, the problem that happened is is they, it was and and we've never ever had an issue with this in the stirrup, but the the some associations have said you know that's where we probably better be careful there. So anyway, we went from this sole to the riding sole, and again, uh, as we demonstrated earlier, it's got a lot more forgiveness in and out of the stirrup. It's 
narrower it's it's cleaner so anyway that's that's kind of the that's kind of the uh, hopefully we can answer that girl's question but yeah we, yeah. we have a we have a no on a yes so. yeah so absolutely so um they, so it just depends on what fat baby you are wearing and there's certainly a fat baby that complements more to riding the sole absolutely no yeah. So we're going to head back to Dave at Neutrina for the last of our four-part series that we've kind of been doing on chicks. He's going to let us know why your chick's feathers might be falling out. Nicole asks, what makes my chicken's feathers fall out? They are in good feed and have a clean coop. Yeah, absolutely. That's a very common question, especially for first-time chicken owners. Um, so a chicken will go into molt, which means they're, they basically lose their feathers and regrow new ones starting for the first time at 18 months. Um, and then after that, every single year, they will go through that, usually in the late summer, early fall type of area. Um, they do that, of course, getting ready for the winter. Um, so they shed their old feathers and get new ones um, in order to help them stay warm throughout the winter. So usually what happens is uh, when they start to molt, they'll stop laying eggs. Um, so all their energy can go into to, uh, regrowing feathers. And you know this can last anywhere from a month to two months, kind of depending on the breed of chicken. Um, and of course, then that would be the right time to think about uh, changing their diet to help them regrow new feathers. And you can go to your local North 40 and talk to your feed department employees there, and they can help you get the right feed to help your chicken get out of molt and back to laying eggs for you. That makes sense. Um, just kind of curious. Uh, is there, a, do you know where chickens typically start to molt, like where feather loss maybe starts? Yes, great question. So um, each bird is a little bit different, but generally they need to molt from their head backwards. Um, you know, so if they start molting anywhere else, like let's say um, back on their tail feathers first, that could mean two things, uh, or one of two things, I guess. A, you might have a rooster or uh, a dominant hen that's picking on them. Or um, if they start back near their vent, um, that means uh, that they probably have mites. Oh. Um, mites are, you know, think of mites like, uh, you know, a kid getting lice, for example, mm -hmm. and, it, and it'll cause the feathers to fall out. So um, there's things you can do for that also, uh, which again, you know, through feeding and then some other products, which you could also go to North 40 and they can help you figure out which, you know, product you need. But definitely if it starts from the back and is going forward, then it's definitely mites. If it's just tail feathers, it's probably a rooster or a meat man. Two zero. Episode 20 is now officially completed. Thank you so much for making this happen. Uh, keep bringing us those questions. If you're on Facebook, leave them in the comments. If you're on Instagram and Twitter, use the hashtag AskNorth40. And if you're on Snapchat, draw us a sweet picture and get us those questions. Keep bringing them to us. We'll keep getting the answers. See you next week.